In our previous lesson on the physical divisions of North America, we understood the Western Cordilleras that are a chain of parallel mountain ranges. So that was the first physical division that we learned in our previous lesson. In today's lesson, we will be focusing on the second physical division of North America. It includes a region of vast fertile land and this is known as the Great Plains. So the Great Plains is also known as the Central Plains simply because it lies at the center of the continent. So the Great Plains are a vast region of fertile lands as I mentioned. So they are known as the breadbasket of North America. Why so? Because this fertile land is used to grow grain in abundance and it also feeds a large part of the world. Therefore, the Great Plains or the Central Plains of North America are known as the breadbasket of North America because here grain, for example, wheat is grown in abundance and this agricultural production is used to feed a large part of the world. Other than that, this fertile land is also a rich deposit of oil and natural gas. So the Great Plains of North America are not only vast expanse of fertile lands and is known as the breadbasket, but it also includes high plateau regions which has semi-arid grasslands. Now the semi-arid grasslands, also known as prairies, are one of the most valuable natural biomes of the continent of North America. Now the prairies as part of the Great Plains mostly includes the Canadian prairies, and the prairies of USA. So the Great Plains are a vast region of fertile lands and these also have a high plateau region of semi-arid grasslands more commonly known as prairies. The prairies of the United States of America are the largest biome of the continent of North America. Now, due to extreme weather conditions in these areas, it does not support the growth of large plants, but it is more suited to the native grasses. In earlier times, herds of bison used to roam over these grasslands. At present, the grasslands have been cleared for the cultivation of wheat, and so rightfully they are called the granary of the world. Now, the prairies of the United States of America is drained by the mighty Mississippi or the Mississippi River and its tributaries. Now, River Mississippi is not only the largest drainage system of the continent, but it also is the most important one. So here we have the picture of the Mississippi River or the mighty Mississippi and here are the prairies of the United States of America. Now, the prairies of Canada or the Canadian prairies, most famously known as, is also drained by a very important river in the northern part of the continent. And this river is the Sakshuan River. Now, the water from this river is mostly used for agricultural and irrigational purposes, but sometimes it is also used for industrial and municipal purpose. Now, the Canadian prairies drained by this river benefits out of this and therefore are agriculturally very productive. Now, here we have a picture of the Sakshuan River and we also have the picture of the Canadian prairies. So, before we proceed with our lesson, could you help me answer this question? The Canadian prairies are drained by the tributaries of which river? Mississippi River, Sakshuan River or the Kansas River? The correct answer is Sakshuan River. So the Canadian prairies are drained by the tributaries of the Sakshuan River. The northern part of the continent has many basins or lakes. This is mainly because in earlier times the northern part was entirely covered by thick ice sheets or thick glaciers which over time when receded or melted led to the formation of various basins which are now either swamps or lakes. Due to this, we have a very important physical feature in the continent of North America and here we are talking about the Great Lakes. The Great Lakes lies at the eastern part of the continent. The Great Lakes are a group of five major lakes and these include Lake Superior right here, 
लेक मिशिगन ह्योर लेक ह्यूरन ह्योर लेक ईरी ह्योर एंड लेक ओंटारियो राइट ह्योर सो दीज फाइव मेजर लेक्स टूगेदर मेकअप द ग्रेट लेक्स ऑफ नॉर्थ अमेरिका now the great lakes of north america lies just below the canadian shield the canadian shield are just another important physical division of the continent of north america however we must keep in mind that these lakes or the great lakes as a whole are fresh water lakes right now most of the lakes which are a part of the great lakes are often known as inland seas why so this is because these lakes show characteristics of sea like they have sustainable winds strong currents rolling waves and also distant horizons so the lakes like lake michigan lake superior and lake huron are among those lakes which show characteristics of sea and are often referred to as inland seas now out of the five lakes lake superior is the second largest lake of the world after the caspian sea however it is the largest fresh water lake in the world right so the superior lake is though the second largest lake by area or surface area in the world it is the largest fresh water lake in the world now these lakes which are a part of the great lakes are very beneficial for the area where it lies which simply means that because of the presence of these lakes or the great lakes in north america the region around that has industrially and agriculturally developed over the years in making it an important region of the continent now after taking a look at the largest fresh water lake of the world let us shift our attention to waterfalls Are you fascinated by waterfalls? Have you ever visited them? Well, waterfalls are a natural wonder. And be it small or unfamous, but waterfalls are beautiful and are mostly found in hilly areas. Just imagine how beautiful would be the largest waterfall of North American continent. we are talking about the niagara falls now the niagara falls are the beautiful waterfalls that we can see or find in the continent of north america and it is also the most powerful in the world now this natural beauty is one of the hot tourist spots of the world and it is also used for the generation of electricity and also for navigation and transportation So here we have the image of the Niagara Falls and it can be found between two lakes of the Great Lakes that is Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. So Niagara Falls is the largest waterfall of the continent of North America. As I mentioned it is a hot tourist spot of the world and is present in the bucket list of millions. So in this lesson we were able to understand the second physical division of the continent of North America that is the Great Plains or the Central Plains. We further learn that the Central Plains has important semi-arid grasslands that is prairies and it is most valuable biome of the continent present in Canada and United States of America. Now these are rightfully called the granary of the world. because they support the cultivation of wheat and other important valuable crops other than that we also learn that the great plains are drained by many important rivers of the continent and has some important basins and lakes present in the region now out of these lakes we learnt about the great lakes of north america which is a group of five important lakes we learned that lake superior is the largest fresh water lake of the world and is a part of the great lakes In the next lesson we will be focusing on another physical division of North America. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. master each topic with our adaptive practice technology get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock test 
get all your doubts resolved instantly learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and ipads so at delta step learning is not just fun and easy it is rewarding too so register for free now